Here where I live, in Aquitawana, Mato Grosso do Sul, especially in the rural area, there are many reports of werewolves. Since I was little, I've heard my father and grandfather tell frightening stories, but I had never witnessed anything that truly scared me. The stories always seemed exaggerated, told to scare children and entertain adults around the campfire. However, something happened last night that completely changed my view of these stories. I was returning home after a long day of work. As I passed through the gate of a client's property, I started hearing dogs barking and howling in desperation. The situation seemed serious, so I didn't think twice and sped towards the commotion. The barking grew louder as I got closer. I turned on the car's high beams to better see what was happening, and what I saw made my heart race. I came upon a circle of dogs, all in attack position, surrounding a disfigured animal in the center. For a moment I thought my sanity was playing tricks on me. The creature looked human, but only in appearance. There was something profoundly wrong with it. A supernatural aura that could be felt from a distance. Its body was covered in fur and, although it moved on all fours, its face and gaze were disturbingly human. The dogs barked and lunged but kept a safe distance, as if they were aware of the danger the creature posed. Then it let out a piercing howl, a sound that reverberated in my chest and made my blood run cold. With a quick agile movement, the creature ran into the woods, disappearing into the darkness. I stood there, paralyzed, trying to process what I had just witnessed. The dogs, still agitated, began to disperse slowly, but I couldn't move. To this day, I doubt my own eyes and try to find a rational explanation for it, but there is none. The next morning, I returned to the site, hoping to find some clue to explain what had happened. I examined the ground and found strange footprints, too large to be from a common dog and shaped unlike any animal I knew. The tracks ended at the edge of the woods, as if the creature had disappeared there. I told the story to my father and grandfather, hoping they could provide an explanation. They listened in silence, with looks that showed more understanding than surprise. My grandfather, with his wise and tired gaze, simply said, Son, some things have no explanation. You encountered what many have only heard about. Now nights in the rural area of Aquitawana will never be the same for me. What were once just legends now carry a terrifying truth that I will never forget. Every howl in the distance, every shadow in the woods brings back the image of that horrendous creature. And although I try to find a rational explanation, Deep down I know that some things simply do not belong to our world, and that the line between the real and the supernatural is thinner than we imagine. Good night. My name is Elias, and one weekend I went to a little party at a bar on the side of the highway near the town where I live. At one point, while we were outside, I overheard a woman talking to her friend. She was telling a very serious story. She said that two weekends ago she had rented a horse to participate in a trail ride. The rental was for three days, and the horse was at her father's ranch. On the first night, she left the horse in a small paddock near the house on the ranch. Since the horse wasn't hers, she would always check on it to see how it was doing. Later that night, tired, she ended up falling asleep. During the early hours of the morning, she woke up to the sound of hooves in the paddock. She called her father, who had vision problems, to go with her to see what was happening. The horse was neighing in a very strange way. It was late at night, 
and there was no apparent reason for it to be behaving like that. Initially, she thought the horse was just unsettled in the new place. While she and her father were there, trying to figure out what might be causing the behavior and what they could do to calm the horse down, near the ranch fence about 70 meters away from where they stood, they saw what looked like a person dragging something. Due to his poor vision, her father couldn't see much, but she, as her eyes adjusted to the darkness of the pasture and she could see better, realized it was a grotesque creature carrying a dead calf. According to the girl, she had no doubts. It was a werewolf. She was recounting the story to her friend without realizing I was listening. She said that, feeling very scared and with her elderly father who had poor vision, she grabbed his hand and started running back towards the house. The horse continued neighing incessantly. Now she knew what was causing it. The creature was probably interested in the calf. The creature had already found prey and didn't terrorize the horse or attempt to invade the ranch. The next day they learned that a calf had gone missing from a neighboring farm. She said she couldn't even participate in the trail ride because she was so shocked by the situation. She returned the horse, which even during the day was still very agitated. The horse seemed to not forget the creature. I can't say for certain if this story is true, but by the seriousness with which I heard her recount it to her friend, I believe it is. I don't think this girl even knows this channel, so I decided to share the story here. Good night. It was a peaceful summer night when my girlfriend and I decided to camp in a remote area of the forest. It was a wooded area in the interior of Rio de Janeiro. We were excited about the idea of escaping the hustle and bustle of the city and enjoying nature. We set up our tent in an isolated spot, surrounded by tall, dense trees. The afternoon passed quickly as we prepared our campfire for the night. Everything was just as I wanted it, with the sky turning shades of orange and the soft sound of birds saying goodbye to the day. After a dinner around the campfire, we snuggled up in the tent because it started to get quite cold as night fell. The light from the lantern created shadows on the walls of the tent as we both settled into our sleeping bags. As the night went on, our tranquility was interrupted by a strange sound that echoed from the forest. It was a roar, but it wasn't like that of a dog. It was much scarier. Instantly, we began to smell rotten flesh. My girlfriend looked at me with wide eyes, and I could feel my heart racing, but I told her to calm down. We remained silent for a few minutes, listening intently. The roar repeated, this time closer as if something big and powerful was coming towards us. Perhaps because of the campfire I tried to stay calm, rationalizing that it could just be a wild animal. But to my knowledge, there is no animal in Brazil that could make that sound. Maybe it could be the roar of a bear if I were camping in an American forest. But in Brazil, that would be impossible. We decided to stay inside the tent in silence, attentive to anything that might happen. I turned off the lantern and the roar continued at irregular intervals throughout the night. Sometimes we heard footsteps and branches breaking as if the creature was circling the tent. Neither of us could fall asleep, obviously, and every sound made us both tremble with fear imagining what could be out there. 
it was one of the scariest and longest nights of our lives. At dawn, we cautiously left the tent and found some strange tracks. By the tracks, it didn't seem to be a common animal. Several bushes and trees were broken, as if a tractor had passed through the area. To this day, I don't know how it didn't notice us. Whatever was out there, it could have killed us in seconds. The memory of that night still haunts us today, and this event took away our courage to camp anywhere in the country or on the planet, because now we know that evil really is out there. Good night. My name is Beto, and I'm going to tell you a story that happened eight years ago. At that time, I had recently separated from my wife, and my son, Lucas, had just turned 12. I decided it was time to take him on an outdoor adventure. We both have always loved nature, so we chose a farm hotel with a nearby camping area. The farm promised an authentic experience with trails, fishing, and direct contact with animals. We arrived on a sunny morning and were warmly welcomed by the farm's owner, Mr. Alfredo. He was a middle-aged man with graying hair and an enigmatic look. He showed us the camping area, which was a short walk from the main house. Lucas was excited about the idea of sleeping under the stars, and we quickly set up our tent. The first nights were peaceful. We spent the days exploring the farm, fishing in the lake, and hiking through the surrounding woods. However, on the third night, something strange began to happen. I woke up in the middle of the night and through the small opening of the tent, saw Mr. Alfredo walking out of the main house on foot. He seemed very cautious, looking around before disappearing into the darkness. I found it curious but attributed it to some personal routine of his and went back to sleep. The following night, we were startled by a terrifying roar coming from the darkness. A colossal creature had attacked the farm. The guests and campers ran, all desperate, to the main house seeking refuge. We managed to lock the doors and windows and spent the rest of the night on watch, listening to the terrifying sounds the creature made outside. The next day, Mr. Alfredo acted as if nothing had happened. He reassured us, saying it was probably some wild animal that had come too close. But that same night, I saw Alfredo sneaking out again. This time, he noticed that I was watching. Our eyes met for a moment and I felt a chill run down my spine. The following morning, I decided it was time to leave. Something was very wrong with that place. I went to the car, but to my astonishment, all four tires were flat. A sense of panic gripped me. I returned to the main house as calmly as I could and informed Mr. Alfredo about the tires. He gave me a look that mixed curiosity with something that seemed like a threat. Don't worry, I'll arrange for someone to fix it, he said with a forced smile. Forta Lucas was growing more restless, and so was I. That night, I kept Lucas close to me the entire time. As everyone prepared to sleep, I started hearing footsteps approaching our tent. I made a small tear in the canvas and saw Alfredo once again heading into the darkness. But this time, he looked different. His eyes were glowing in a supernatural way. I decided to follow him, leaving Lucas in the tent with a quick excuse. 
I was careful, keeping a safe distance so as not to be noticed. I followed him to a deep clearing in the forest where he began to transform. Instantly, Alfredo became a werewolf, a monstrous and powerful creature. My mind raced. I needed to protect my son and get out of there as quickly as possible. I ran back to the tent, grabbed Lucas, and we headed to the main house. Now I had to plan our escape. When the sun finally rose, I convinced some of the other campers to help us with the car. However, Alfredo was always nearby, watching my every move. That's when I realized he wouldn't let us leave. We were trapped there with a werewolf who now knew his secret had been discovered. My only hope was to get help from outside, but the farm was too isolated for any cell signal, at least back then. After a distraction from Alfredo, I grabbed Lucas and we ran down a trail I knew well, which led to a road. By the grace of God, we found a car on the road that gave us a ride to the city. I only returned the next day with a tow truck. I didn't want to deal with my car problem at that farm. I don't know if Mr. Alfredo harmed anyone during that time or even to this day. In fact, I never went back to that place and don't even know if it still operates as a farm hotel or if Alfredo is alive or dead. The only thing that matters to me is that my son and I are safe to this day. Good night. My name is Bragantino. I live here on the farm I inherited from my parents, which they also inherited from my grandparents. My family consists of me, my wife, and my two children, Lucas and Sophia. We were all asleep when we woke up to wild howls approaching the farmhouse. At first, we thought it might be some forest animal, maybe a wolf or even a jaguar, but those howls were different. They were very sinister, carrying an evil energy. I got up and went to see what was happening. We have four dogs on the farm and they were all already agitated. When I approached the window, I was the first to see that creature. What was outside was a werewolf and it was advancing towards the house, taking very heavy steps. I took a step back, pulling my face away from the window in an attempt to keep that creature from realizing there were people inside the house. At that moment, my wife and children also approached where I was, and I signaled for them to stay quiet. I tried to hide the fear in my eyes as I grabbed the shotgun I kept on the farm for emergencies. The werewolf began circling the house, and the sounds it made were simply terrifying. I couldn't risk going outside to face it even though I was armed. That's when I decided to call the police without mentioning it was a werewolf. I said the farm was being invaded. The officer was actually an old acquaintance of mine, who was a sergeant and already knew the location of my farm. The minutes dragged on slowly until the lights of the patrol car finally cut through the darkness. The dogs were now fighting the creature very close to the house. It was at this moment that the sergeant stopped the patrol car right in front of that terrifying scene. Suddenly, the creature rose up and started delivering strong blows to each of my dogs, throwing them aside. The sergeant decided to act, getting out of the car and firing shots at it. The werewolf finally started to flee into the woods. 
disappearing and letting out eerie howls. The sergeant looked at me with a face as if he couldn't believe what had just happened. It's not safe to stay here, he said urgently. We didn't question his words. We all ran to the patrol car. As we drove away, I couldn't believe this had happened. The farm now has reinforced doors and windows, and when strangers show up here, I notice they look somewhat mocking when I tell them that the security I installed on my farm isn't for thieves, but for a werewolf. Good night. On a certain weekend, I was at my grandparents' farm. It was late at night, and I was sitting on the porch enjoying the serenity of the night until suddenly, I began to hear the farm dog whimpering nearby. He seemed to be hurt. In that instant, my relaxation dissipated, replaced by an urgent anxiety. Concerned, I rushed outside to see what was happening, and what I found was a scene that filled me with horror. Max, the dog, was crouched on the ground, trembling in fear, his eyes wide with terror. His fur was dirty, and something strange and repugnant was stuck in his mouth. With a heavy heart, I approached and tried to calm him down. As I examined what was stuck in his mouth, it was a grotesque thing. It seemed to have twisted tentacles and a repulsive skin. Horror gripped me as I realized that the creature was still alive, writhing and making strange sounds. Without a second thought, I yanked that creature out of Max's mouth. Upon examining his mouth, I noticed his tongue was injured and bleeding. He looked at me with gratitude and fear in his eyes, as if pleading for help. My heart ached seeing his condition, and I wanted to know the meaning behind it. I decided to find out what was going on. With the repugnant creature in one of my hands, and Max by my side, I ventured into the darkness of the night, determined to find answers. I took my grandfather's gun, and as I started to advance through the forest, Max turned back. It was strange because whenever I left the farm, he was the first one eager to come with me. I realized it was something truly sinister. I left Max behind and ventured into the dark forest. The more I advanced, the more unsettled I became. I could hear Max barking from the farm as if telling me to go back. Suddenly I saw a dark, distorted figure looking at me from beside a tree. A sensation of pure terror seized me as I realized what was before me, but in truth, I didn't know what it was. I only knew it was a creature that neither I nor anyone else had ever seen. A nature aberration with a grotesque appearance. I raised the shotgun and fired. My heart pounded in my chest as the bullet hit the target. A sharp cry of pain emanated from the creature's depths, and at the same instant, it disappeared into the darkness. I was breathless and trembling from adrenaline, 
Something dark and macabre inhabited the depths of that forest. I began to run home. I couldn't stay there. Max kept barking and seemed to tremble with happiness when he saw me returning from the forest. My grandparents heard the shot and were waiting for me on the porch, eager for some answers. I explained everything to them. I couldn't figure out what that creature was, but it never dared to approach the farm's headquarters. And Max never entered that forest at night again. Good night. Good. Anger burned inside me as I aimed my gun at the creatures. I had only one goal in mind, to save my son. With a cry of fury, I fired, targeting the creatures with lethal precision. They emitted horrifying sounds of pain as the bullets hit them, but my son was unharmed. I ran to him, ignoring those creatures, and scooped him up in my arms, feeling an indescribable relief flood my being. I ran back home, leaving behind those creatures that dared to enter my house. The look of happiness on my wife's face when she saw me coming with our son in my arms was priceless. We locked the entire house, and while my wife took care of our son, I swore to protect them wielding the shotgun to all windows and doors. Fortunately, the creatures did not return. I have no idea what those things were. However, my wife's and my dream of being a farming couple ended that night. We sold our property and now lead a life we didn't want but safe in the city. Good night. Hello, my name is Brenner, and I want to report here what happened many years ago when I was still single. I was a lonely fisherman and used to camp in the forest. On a particular night, something was about to happen that would change my life forever. Before midnight, while I was preparing my campfire and setting up my fishing equipment, two Indians suddenly appeared in the clearing. Initially, I was startled by their unexpected presence, but soon I realized that the Indians were there with a specific purpose, and in a solemn and urgent manner, they tried to communicate to me that I was in danger. They spoke a strange language, but gestures and facial expressions conveyed the seriousness of the situation. They warned that on that particular night it was dangerous, as a werewolf roamed the forest. Although initially doubting the credibility of the Indian's warning, I decided to stay at my campsite. I was a practical and skeptical man, and did not believe in scary legends and myths. However, as the night progressed and the full moon rose in the sky, a sense of unease began to settle in my heart. The sounds of the forest became more sinister, and a strange feeling of being watched disturbed me, until suddenly, as if emerging from the shadows, the werewolf appeared. It was a huge and terrifying creature, 
half man and half wolf, its eyes gleaming with wild intensity. I could hardly believe what was before my eyes. In panic, I began to scream for help, remembering the Indians who had warned me about that danger. And as if they had heard my desperate call, the Indians emerged from the shadows, ready to act with skill and determination. The Indians fought alongside me against that beast, using their spears and knowledge of the forest. They managed to weaken that creature. With a furious howl, the werewolf retreated into the depths of the forest. Hours later, the Indians revealed to me that that beast was actually one of them, another Indian who also lived in their village, and that the mission of the two was to protect anyone who entered the forest when he was in his transformation. Since that night, I have never underestimated the power of the legends that inhabit the forests. I decided to abandon that lonely life. I found a girlfriend and ended up getting married, moving to the city. And these memories will stay with me until the day I die. Good night. In a vast and lush forest, where gigantic trees reached towards the skies and various mysterious creatures inhabited its interior, at the heart of this impenetrable jungle, there was a desire to connect two distant cities through a railway. An audacious undertaking that would require courage, hard work, and a touch of fearlessness. The company responsible for this monumental task sent a team of workers to face the density of the forest, men and women, engineers and laborers, all united with a singular purpose, to forge a railroad that would forever change the connectivity of the region. The initial days of work were challenging, with axes cutting through the dense vegetation and thunderous machines creating clearings in the forest. Nights were filled with the sounds of nocturnal nature, but the workers were determined to achieve their goal. As the railway progressed, the forest seemed to react unexpectedly. Nighttime whispers fueled the workers' imagination. Some claimed to have heard strange voices, while others swore they had seen bright eyes in the darkness. However, these accounts were quickly dismissed as mere forest legends. On a night illuminated by the full moon, the team decided to camp in a recently cleared glade. As the moonlight bathed the area, nervousness enveloped the camp. Fires were lit, and stories were told to dispel the growing discomfort. It was then that something unimaginable happened. Suddenly, a roar echoed through the forest, prompting everyone to rise. The vegetation stirred, branches snapped, and the workers' eyes widened as a colossal creature emerged from the shadows. It was a creature whose form was a twisted blend of different forest animals, sharp claws, luminous eyes, and a roar that sent shivers down the workers' spines. The railway cut through the territory of this creature, and it was not pleased. Panic set in as the creature circled the camp. However, to everyone's surprise, instead of attacking, 
the creature communicated in a strange manner. It seemed to express sadness and anger, as if lamenting the human invasion of its territory. The creature hinted that it could kill everyone if it wanted to but chose not to, then withdrew. The initially terrified workers realized they needed a peaceful solution. They decided to work differently, promising to minimize environmental impact. This episode left a lasting mark on the workers, who learned to respect nature. Thus, the construction of the railway continued, but now with a new perspective and renewed respect. Weapons were brought to the camps around the construction, but they were not needed, as the creature did not reappear, and the railway was completed, connecting the cities and opening doors to development. Nevertheless, the legend of the nocturnal creature was always told as a reminder of the importance of preserving the delicate balance between man and nature. Hello, good night. First of all, I wanted to say that I'm a fan of your channel and everything I'm going to tell you here was real and everyone involved is still alive, so I won't let me lie. My name is Jose, better known as Junior. I was born in a paradise in the lower south of Bahia on an island called Tavare Island with the city of Cairo as its municipality, right where the famous hill of Sao Paulo is located. Good. That was about five years ago, when I, my partner Gretson, my partner Giacilio, and my cousin Gletson, who was my partner's brother and also cousin Gretson, we decided to go out for a hunt. It was a very beautiful night with a bright, full moon. We scheduled to leave at 7 p.m. and we did so. We walked for around an hour until one of the dogs picked up its scent and ran off into the woods. Then the other two also entered. We waited, insulating the dogs, and when they gave the signal that they had cornered the game, we entered the forest. When we got to the dogs, we didn't see anything. We looked and looked again and nothing. Until one of the dogs looked up the tree and started barking and growling. Gridson shined his flashlight on the tree trunk and saw nail marks. Soon he deduced that the hunt was a large anteater that was up in the tree. We turned on the other flashlights and there was the bad guy. We got him. We decided to continue forward and once again the dog came in and took another game. Another one ahead. But this one was inside a large anthill, so we decided to set a trap and leave it to look another day. After about two hours of hunting, we arrived at a place that is already well known for having apparitions and other supernatural things. Then the dogs ran into the woods. But it seemed like they were being made stupid, for they entered and left. They entered again and left lost. It was then that Giacilio shouted, I already know what it is. This slut is playing with dogs. If she appears in front of me, I'll cut her up with my machete. Then, as soon as he closed his mouth, Six dogs ran from one side of the forest to the other. So I said, guys, we only brought three dogs, didn't we? And they said, yes. I said, here it's been six. And then I got goosebumps. Then we started to hear voices and laughter. We saw a herd of cattle coming towards us and we ended up throwing ourselves into the bush. 
but the accent suddenly disappeared. Gritson told us to stay together because we already knew what it was, and we knew that she wouldn't let us get out of that forest that easily. The moon shone in the sky and those lost in the woods. We saw a path and a person standing while Jachulio saw hunting. He put the dogs up and the thing that was looking at us rolled away into the woods. Less than a minute later the dogs screamed as if they were being hit by something. And it really was. Every breath of wind froze your spine. We heard loud voices laughing and the paths were covered in weeds in front of us. We didn't feel anything except weeds. Even with the moon lit and lanterns lit. All the time the dogs were crying, getting tangled up on our legs. We saw giant fireflies screaming and laughing that were scary. We heard branches breaking around us constantly. From time to time she tried to separate us, making each one see something different, different paths, and even people calling. We knew we couldn't separate ourselves there because whoever she caught alone would get a hell of a beating, not to mention who knows what else could happen. We fell down ravines, crossed rivers, and mudflats. We were already exhausted, cold, and a little bruised due to the calluses on our boots. It was then that we remembered that we had brought garlic and some rope tobacco. We divided it between the four of us and each one left the garlic mixed with the rope smoke on the floor. And Jachulio threw another amount in the air and shouted take garlic and tobacco and leave us alone. Take garlic, I have more here. And he threw it up again. A strong wind passed us and broke everything inside the forest. And at the same time everything calmed down and when we looked we were on the sandy path which was the right way to go home. But I pointed the flashlight at the ground and there was our floorboard. We were walking in a circle all the time. We entered the forest and came out on the path and so on. So we went home around 4 o'clock in the morning. And when we got home I told my grandmother and she told me that we were lucky that we didn't get separated. I haven't hunted since then, but not out of fear. But also because I'm living in Rio de Janeiro now. I miss those adventures. The boys still hunt from time to time, but none of the four of us have forgotten that episode. Well... That was my somewhat summarized account of the day the caperer didn't make me get lost in the woods. Sorry for the mistakes in Portuguese, all the names mentioned here are the real names of the people who were with me as well as mine. Thanks again and happy hunting.